Hopefully by this point you're, you've entered, you've started learning about tissues and you've learned that there are different types of tissues in our body. There's four main types. You have epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about connective tissue. And think of connective tissue basically as the glue that binds us together. Okay? And there's a bunch of different types of connective tissue. This is going to be a little bit of a long, uh, a long talk today and I apologize. Up, up uh, ahead for that. It's going to be a little bit long. Uh, connective tissue is the most abundant and widely distributed tissue we have. It is everywhere. Like I said, it's the glue that binds us together. It connects us. All right. And when we talk about connect connective tissue, we divide it into basically four uh, classes. We have what's called just basically regular connective tissue or uh, connective tissue proper, kind of your regular connective tissue. We have what's called cartilage. We have bone, and we have blood. And examples of the different types of connective tissue, if you have connective tissue proper, we have what's called loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and under those categories, we have what's called areolar, adipose, which you guys know is fat, reticular. In uh, connective, dense connective tissue, we have regular, irregular, and elastic. And I'm going to show you pictures of these and describe where you would find those in just a second. Uh, we have three different types of cartilage. We have bone and we have blood. Um, why do we have this connective tissue? Basically, it holds us together. It binds us together and it gives us support. Think about one of the types of connective tissue is bone. That, that supports our body. That's our scaffolding. Uh, it protects us. Uh, think of, again, think of bone. It protects your brain. Your brain's inside your skull. You also have uh, fat which is the cushioning on your body, so that's a protective uh, uh, type of uh, function of connective tissue. Uh, insulation, fat will insulate you, bone will protect you, bone will support you. Um, transportation, uh, that's carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body, nutrients throughout the body. So connective tissue does a whole lot for us, and we're going to talk about each type of the different types of connective tissue and where you can expect to find them and what they do. Um, connective tissues can be very, very different. Uh, they're not all the same, and one of the things that you're going to look at is how much blood supply, and we call that vascularity, how, many, how much vasculature or how many vessels, or what is the blood supply of a connective tissue. Some are highly vascularized, that means they have a whole lot of blood supply, and some are avascular, which means they don't have a blood supply at all. And one of the ones that you can think of um, immediately that's avascular is cartilage. You may have heard this before. If you uh, hurt something, if you tear a piece of cartilage, you know, sometimes that's actually worse than uh, breaking a bone, because there's not a whole lot of blood supply in cartilage, and it takes a long time for it to heal. Whereas bone is highly vascularized. That's where your bone marrow is, it's the stuff that makes your bone even. There's a lot of vessels that are inside of, actually inside your bones. A lot of blood vessels, highly vascular, it will repair itself rather quickly. So it's actually better to break a bone than to tear cartilage because you've got better blood supply in the bone than you do the cartilage. Um, most connective tissue is separated by some kind of non-living matrix, some kind of substance that's kind of in between the cells. And uh, you also have some kind of ground substance, which allows things to diffuse. We talked about diffusion, how things can get in and out of, uh, in and out of interstitial fluid, inter inside the cells, outside the cells, how things can move through the tissue. Well, you've got to get in, uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and that kind of things from the capillaries, from the blood vessels into the cells, so it's got to move through this connective tissue or this ground substance that makes up the connective tissue. When we talk about connective tissue, a lot of times you'll see fibers associated with it. Um, we have three types of these fibers. You're going to see collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. Collagen are always, uh, they give us strength. They're strong. They're very, um, they're everywhere. They give us a lot of the, the, the strength of our tissues. You have elastic tissues, and that gives you uh, elasticity so that things can bend and move and then go back to their original shape. And then you have what's called reticular, uh, which is kind of like a web-like um, structure, which is usually like a scaffold, so it gives you support, since the whole thing's in place, like a scaffolding. 
Again, we talk about our, another thing we talked about was connective tissue um, are the different types of connective tissue cells. When you see a connective tissue cell, a lot of times it's going to have a suffix, the thing at the end, that says either blast or site. Um, if it has the word site at the end, it means it's a young cell, it's a mitotically active cell. If it's mitotically active, that means it's dividing, that's a symbol for division, or growing. If it's a site, it's a mature cell, it's kind of done its thing, it's a mature cell no longer uh, growing. So for example, uh, in cartilage, the word that we use to describe cartilage, we use the word chondro. Chondro means cartilage. So chondroblasts are actively making cartilage, and chondrocytes are kind of the mature cells that are kind of there maintaining it. You have osteoblasts in bone, and you have osteocytes. Again, you see that word blast, and let's see that word site tells you one's mitotically active and, and one's not. Um, you also see cells, uh, hematopoietic, that means these are the cells that make the blood inside of your bone marrow. Um, some other types of connective tissue are your fat cells, which we call the adipocytes. Adipose is fat tissue. You have white blood cells, you have mast cells, and you have ma uh, macrophages. These are all different types of things you're going to see associated uh, with connective tissue. Um, so this is basically a, a, a schematic of connective tissue. So it's not just one uniform thing. There's a bunch of stuff going on when you look at connective tissue. So you've got different fibers. You've got the collagen fibers, the elastic fibers. You've got the reticular fibers that are uh, acting as support. Uh, you've got fibroblasts coming here, making a fibrin or, a, or um, fibers. You've got lymphocytes, which are playing a role in immunity. You've got fat cells, which makes fat for storage of energy, also insulation, fishing, things like that. Mast cells. Mast cells actually release histamine. So like if you get a, an allergic reaction, you kind of itch, that's the histamine uh, from the mast cells when you've reacted to something. So you take an antihistamine so you don't get itchy anymore. So there's a lot of stuff going on in connective tissue. There's a lot of different types of cells and, and fibers and things going on there. It's not uniform, which is kind of different from muscle tissue and nervous tissue uh, that, you see, that you'll see in uh, the next presentation. They're more uniform than connective tissue. So let's talk about some of these different types of connective tissues and where you might find them. Again, with connective tissue proper, which is kind of the main category of connective tissue, you have loose connective and dense connective. So I'm going to show you some pictures and show you uh, where you can find those and what they look like. Uh, you will have some histology slides on this next exam. And so I'm going to have a PowerPoint where I show you some of the histology slides from our lab here at Calhoun. Uh, but you can also use the ones from this PowerPoint as well to help you study the different types of uh, tissues and how you would recognize them under a microscope. Uh, for people in my online class, you can't, you don't have a microscope at home, so you're going to have to do this virtually, uh, watching the videos and looking at the PowerPoints. Um, this is an example of the areolar connective tissue. Um, it's kind of a gel-like matrix. Um, its main function is that it's, it's, it holds a lot of fluid, it holds a lot of tissue fluid. Uh, you're going to see it uh, near anywhere there's epithelia. Um, around the organs. Usually there's going to be, they're going to be some around capillaries. Um, if you were to, you know, like maybe hit your arm and then you have swelling, that's that uh, fluid leaving the capillaries and going into that areolar tissue and swelling. That's what's holding that fluid and allowing you to have a, an area that swells. So areolar tissue is what's going to swell if you, you know, bump into something or, or you know, whack your head or something with a baseball bat. Don't do that. All right, the other type of connective tissue uh, proper is uh, called loose connective tissue. It's adipose. And adipose is just a fancy word for fat. And you're going to see this uh, under your skin in the hypodermis, which we'll talk about. We haven't talked about the skin yet. You're going to see it in your abdomen. Uh, you know that. Beer gut. Women, you're going to see adipose tissue in the breast tissue. And what you see in uh, adipose tissues, each one of these is actually an adipocyte. And what happens is that this is basically a big vacuole or storage container with a big fat drop in it. It's kind of nasty, kind of gross. So each one of these is one big old fat drop. 
And so each cell has one vacuole with one big fat drop in it. And the fat drop is so big that it kind of pushes the nucleus kind of out to the side. So these little dark things that you're seeing, these are the nucleuses or nuclei of the fat cells. And so as you lose and gain weight, so a lot of times these fat cells, they're just getting bigger and bigger. And as you lose weight, they're actually getting smaller and smaller. Uh, so um, when you're trying to lose weight, what you're trying to do is shrink the big fat drop inside of each one of these adipocytes. Think of it that way, shrinking fat drops. All right, another type of tissue of this loose connective tissue is called reticular tissue. And again, reticular kind of means web-like. Um, a place you're going to see uh, this in particular is inside the spleen. And the spleen plays a role in immunity. And basically, it acts like a filter, basically. Your blood goes in uh, lymph, lymph tissue, uh, lymph fluid goes through the, through the lymph nodes and into the spleen and is basically filtered out. And uh, if you need to get rid of any kind of uh, bacteria or whatever needs to be dealt with, if they can be sick, the spleen can kind of filter that out. And so it's kind of a sieve-like material that allows uh, this filtration to filter your lymph uh, and clean it out. A, a connective tissue, a dense connective tissue. The first one we're going to talk about is dense regular. Uh, and just think it's dense, it means it's really smashed up together. It's not loose and web like like the reticular, the areolar, it's real, real compact. Uh, and it's regular. And you can look at this, and it has a very defined pattern, a very regular pattern. Um, these are usually going to be found somewhere where muscle connects to bone or muscles uh, connect to muscles. And these are really, really strong joints. They withstand a great bit, a great amount of tensile strength. Um, and these are going to be found in joints that only move really in one direction. Okay, so these fibers, because they're all lined up in the same direction, they only move in one direction. Okay, so here you can see, you would expect to find this dense uh, connective tissue connecting the muscle to the bone, and when the muscle contracts, it just moves in one direction, okay? So it's just kind of a uni, unidirectional movement is where you would expect to find regular, dense regular. There's also something called dense irregular, okay? And this stuff just kind of goes everywhere. It's like you can't even tell, you know, which direction it may go. Well, you're going to find this in a joint that maybe is unidirectional. So think about maybe inside your shoulder where you can have multi-axial movements. You may see uh, some dense irregular tissue there. You can also see it, um, think about your face. You can smile and frown and move your face all around, all kind of different directions of movement. There's irregular connective tissue there that's able to move in different, uh, different directions. And then you have what's called elastic, dense connective elastic. And you're going to see this, uh, this has a very uh, good ability to stretch out and then uh, snap back to its original shape. And common place to find this would be inside the aorta, which is a large artery coming off the heart. Um, every time the heart beats, it forces a, a large amount of blood into the aorta. The blood goes through, and then it kind of collapses back. And it stretches and collapses. Think about your pulse. Ray, we're just kind of doing this as well as the blood moving, moving through it. Um, you want that to, you want this to snap back every time the heart beats. So you're going to see that anywhere that you have kind of a repetitive um, expansion and contraction. You'd also see it inside the bronchial, in the bronchial tubes. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Those bronchial tubes will expand, contract, expand, contract. All right, the other type of connective tissue is cartilage. And cartilage, oh, most of the time, uh, you'll see it associated with a lot of time with bone, and we're going to talk about it a lot when we talk about the skeletal system. Um, but you've got some cartilage in other places too, besides uh, besides bone. The main types of cartilage are hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. And you need to know the three types of cartilage, and we'll talk about uh, what they are and where you can find them. The hyaline cartilage is the most abundant. It's everywhere. You have most of the hyaline cartilage. You find it just about everywhere. And again, we're going to talk about this again when we talk about the bones. Um, it's kind of a support type of cartilage. Uh, it can help with cushioning. 
And just about anywhere you have a long bone, like in your arm or your femur, uh, you're going to have the ends of those bones, you're going to have cartilage on them. It also connects your ribs to your sternum. It makes up, when we looked at the, in the trachea, when your trachea is coming down, it's got those little rings, which you breathe, the air comes from your mouth into your lungs. Your trachea is made up of cartilage as well as parts of the larynx. And this is a micrograph slide of cartilage. And it looks kind of glass-like. It's kind of a, 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 a purple glass. And then you see these bubbles inside of it. And inside these bubbles, you have what are called chondrocytes. Remember, chondro means cartilage, site means cell. So the cartilage-making cells are inside these bubbles. And those bubbles are called lacuna. So the little lacuna are the cell homes for the chondrocytes. So if you see something that looks glassy in appearance, with bubbles, with little cells inside of it, that's going to be hyaline cartilage. Um, elastic cartilage, where you're going to see that, that's going to be another type of connective tissue that can spring back to its original shape, and you're going to see that in the external ear. You, you know, flip your ear, it goes back to its regular shape. You also see it in the epiglottis. And the epiglottis is a little flap that will cover over the trachea when you drink water or um, eat so that food or water doesn't go down your trachea, but it goes down your esophagus instead. So it's a little flap that will kind of when you swallow, the epiglottis covers the trachea so good water goes into the right place. And then it snaps back to its regular shape so that you can keep breathing. Um, here's a micrograph of it. It looks very similar. You've got the little lacuna with the chondrocytes inside. But instead of having that glassy appearance, you see these, this matrix, that elastic matrix, which gives it it's, uh, more, it's more resilient. It will snap back to its original shape. It's a little different. And then you have fiber cartilage, the last type of cartilage, and it's really strong. Uh, it's really good for being a shock absorber. And uh, I'm not going to have a picture of fiber cartilage on your practical, uh, but it looks uh, kind of like uh, kind of like the elastic cartilage. A lot of times it looks so similar that I, I just don't ask. So uh, don't worry about learning what fiber cartilage looks like for the practical for the lab part of the exam. But this is fiber cartilage. Again, you can see the little lacuna with the chondrocytes inside of it. And it's got a little more regular um, pattern to it. Uh, where you expect to find fiber cartilage is anywhere that there's going to be a lot of shock. And so you see it between your vertebra. So every time you walk and your backbone is taking all the pressure of every movement, there's a lot of force on your backbone as you move. Uh, you also see it between your femur and your tibia and the knee. Well, a in your knee, there's a there's a piece of fiber cartilage. Think about when you run and you're, you're just kind of pounding on your knee joint. There's going to be some there. And there's also a piece of fiber cartilage that connects um, your two hip bones. So here's your hip bone. There's a piece of fiber cartilage that connects the front. It's called the pubic symphysis, and we'll talk about that um, when we talk about the skeleton. But in order to hold your hip bones together, you need a really strong piece of cartilage. <laughs> And so those are two big bones, and you've got fiber cartilage holding those together. All right, another type of connective tissue is bone, and it's the hard one. Uh, all the other types of connective tissue are, are soft and pliable. Bone is hard. Um, if you see the word osseous, that also means uh, bone. Anytime you see osseous tissue, that's the same thing as bone. And it's highly vascularized, whereas cartilage is not, not very much blood going on there, a lot of blood supply to bone. This is a micrograph or a slide of a bone. Looks kind of like a bunch of tree rings. And bone kind of grows from these little circular rings like that. We'll go into more detail again in Unit 2. You'll also see that word again, the lacuna. You've got these little spots, these little uh, cavities, little holes. And inside each one of those uh, cavities is a bone-forming cell. Uh, you're going to see anywhere you have a bone, you have osseous tissue. And the last type of connective tissue is the blood. And a lot of people forget. They go, well, you know, they think they can understand how connective tissue holds you together. But blood binds us together, too. It goes all over our body and transports things to all parts of our body. So it does kind of um, bind us together. It takes everything all around our body. Um, blood is also made in the bone. 
Uh, so it's very well connected, uh, part of the connective tissue uh, family of, of tissues. All your blood elements, uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, everything that you need uh, in blood is made in the bone marrow and then migrates out into the blood vessels where it becomes blood. And you're going to cover blood in 202. Uh, I just want you to have a, a, a basic understanding of what blood looks like. Again, it's going to be, it's the only connective tissue that's going to be in a fluid matrix. So you have blood cells floating around in fluid, and that fluid is called plasma. And so these pink things, these are the red blood cells, which we call erythrocytes. And these larger things are the white blood cells. And there's different types of white blood cells. There's lymphocytes, neutrophils, all, uh, macrophage, I mean, basophils, eosinophils, um, monocytes. You don't have to know that. You just have to know these big ones are the white blood cells, which we also call leukocytes. And the pink ones are the erythrocytes. The erythrocytes carry oxygen. And the white blood cells are usually, have, they play a role in immunity. Um, one thing you may notice between the red blood cells and white blood cells, all the white blood cells have a big nucleus in them. There is no nucleus in the red blood cells. And basically, uh, right before a red blood cell, when it's mature, right before it's sent out from the bone marrow into the blood, it basically expels or spits out its nucleus. And the reason is you want to have as much carrying capacity for oxygen as you can. So you get rid of that nucleus, you don't want to waste space so that you can carry as much, as much oxygen as you can inside the red blood cell. But because of that, they don't live very long. They only last about 21 days. And because they don't have a nucleus, they can't, make, they can't repair themselves. So once a red blood cell has kind of lived its life of 21 days, it goes through the spleen. The spleen kind of cleans that out and gets rid of the old discarded used red blood cells and your bone marrow makes more, starts over. All right, let's see, anything else? All right, that will be the end of today's lecture, and I will see you again next time. Any questions, just let me know.